Hey, it's Monday and it's weather for Weather Geeks time. What a wild ride we've got coming over the next 24 to 48 hours. So let's get right to it. We've got a lot to talk about on this uh, Monday morning. I'm recording this at about uh, quarter till 8 a.m. It's early and uh, look how warm it is. I mean, it's just remarkably warm outside for, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, 69 degrees in Youngstown, 70 over towards the Akron Canton Airport, 70 down in Beaver Falls, 69 degrees in Newcastle. It's just, uh, it feels remarkable outside this morning. It feels like the middle of summer, but of course we've got big changes coming our way. Here's the setup. We've got low pressure this morning centered up here, cold front down in here. There are showers breaking out ahead of that front, and those showers will make it here later on. Let's uh, zoom out and take a look at the bigger picture here, and uh, look how cold the air is out across the Midwest and into the Plain States. I'm going to turn off uh, the pressure analysis here and a few other things as well. Make this a little less busy. Uh, we've got uh, snow falling out in Kansas, Oklahoma, heading right up to the to the Midwest, and showers and thunderstorms down into the deep south today. Uh, the uh, the temperatures, yeah, a big time story today. Check out uh, that's not what I wanted. Check out the, the the gradient here, the temperature spread. Easy to pick out where the front is. I mean, you don't have to have a degree in meteorology to see this. We've got a cold front right in through here. Ahead of it, feels like summer. Behind it, it's right back to winter. And unfortunately, this air, yeah, it's coming our way by tomorrow. And that's going to spell some trouble for us. So let's talk about to the future now that we've talked about the present. Uh, let's focus on the short term for a moment. And I'll bring up the latest high-resolution rapid refresh model. This is a high-resolution model that's run every hour. And it kind of self-corrects. It, it is constantly getting new information in and, and updating itself. And so we tend to rely on this pretty heavily in the short term. It generally does pretty good. Uh, I'm going to fast forward a few hours to late morning here. Here's uh, 11 in the morning showing uh, showers trying to push in from the west. Now, this might be a tad aggressive the air mass really dry still around uh, the, the Mahoning and Shenango Valley. So the leading edge of this, uh, the precipitation might not quite reach the ground for a little while, but it, it'll moisten up eventually the entire atmosphere. And so, yeah, showers are going to get going around midday. Here's noon, 1 p.m., and there's 2 p.m. And as, uh, a lot of kids are on spring break this week, but uh, if you happen to have a kid in school this week as uh, they get off of school 2.33 this afternoon, yeah, the radar looks pretty active. Some showers around. You'll notice there's not much yellow or certainly no orange. There's no, uh, you know, real heavy rain on this uh, on this simulated radar this afternoon. I wouldn't be shocked to hear a clap of thunder, but it could be pretty few and far between. Just some pretty garden variety April showers, it looks like, for the midday and the afternoon today. And I'll, I'll wrap things up here with 7 p.m. this evening, uh, an hour before sunset. Still some scattered showers out over uh, parts of northern Ohio, but already by this evening, right before sunset, notice what's going on to the west. It's it's changing over to snow in uh, Chicago and heading into parts of Michigan again, and that's what's going to come our way as we head into tomorrow. So let's talk about tomorrow, and I'm going to bring up uh, the latest NAM model here. Simulated radar product for uh, the middle of the night tonight. Let's back things up here. This is at... Uh, Two o'clock in the morning, precipitation getting set to swing back in. And as I fast forward then to daybreak tomorrow, here's 7 a.m. We've got our precipitation around, but what type of precipitation is it? I, I don't think it's all totally rain. I think we could very easily start to see kind of a mixed bag here. That's being shown by our, our peach and, and kind of reddish colors here. Uh, probably some sleet mixing with rain. The, the first type of precipitation other than rain we'll probably see is a mix of rain and sleet at six, seven, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And then yes, the blue that's out here, that's snow of course. And as I fast forward a couple of hours, here's nine in the morning. Yeah, we're transitioning over to snow. Uh, now it's April and this is falling during the day. And even though temperatures will be pretty close to freezing, maybe even a little below freezing, this is going to have a hard time sticking on, on paved surfaces. So, you know, I suspect the roads are going to be wet from this. If, if I see a, any reason to change that idea, I certainly will. But at this point, I don't think you're going to have travel problems tomorrow. But it's going to be snowing here at a pretty good clip. This is the simulated uh, radar product at uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, snowing. And uh, certainly on the grass and on car tops and that sort of thing. It'll stick, and I, I can see where we're going to get some accumulation out of this. Talk about those specific numbers in just a second. Now, by midday, this is at noon tomorrow. Precipitation's pushing east, and so uh, you know I think things are going to wind down around lunchtime tomorrow with the uh, the wet snow tapering off and ending by one, maybe two o'clock at the latest. This is a simulated radar at two, and these echoes here are very, very light, probably not even realistic. So. 
uh, we're going to see snow tomorrow and the, and the timetable on it, if it's going to stick on your, on your grass, probably going to be eight to 9 AM through about noon or one, uh, a three or four hour window where some of us, you know, probably going to see a small accumulation of snow. How much snow are we talking about? Well, let me show you a few different computer models here. First of all, the uh, short range ensemble model or the SREF. Uh, this is an ensemble model, which means that it's, it's uh, a model that uh, the initial conditions that are fed into it are changed about 22 times, 21, 22 times. Uh, each time there's a change, the models run again, and each model run is represented by a line on this graph. Um, the ensemble mean or the average of all of the lines is the darker line that runs right in through here. Well, we're looking at a snow accumulations here. Numbers are a little hard to read on the left. I apologize for that. But basically the one inch line is here, two inches here, three inches here, four inches here. The ensemble mean is at about 1.4, it looks like, 1.4 inches. That's the average of all of these different runs of this model. Uh, you'll notice, though, that that average is probably being pulled up a little bit by some of the stragglers up here at the top. You know, I don't I don't really believe anybody's going to get three and a half, four inches of snow out of this. Uh, so the ensemble means probably being artificially lifted a little bit because of these higher numbers. You'll notice the, the lines are more tightly clustered down here, and that's between zero and about an inch and a third. Uh, so, you know, the SRF model, I think, overall is saying we're going to get about an inch, an inch and a quarter, maybe. Here's the... Uh, European ensemble. Now, this is a little different take here. This is the percent chance of a certain amount of snow occurring, and what we have it set out here is one inch. So this is the percent chance of places seeing one inch worth of snow. The odds are really high. Now, ever since late last week, the European model has been the most aggressive with the snow totals, perhaps a little too aggressive, but nonetheless, you know, it has us over 90 percent and even close to 100 percent in some spots, the chance of getting an inch worth of snow across the region. So that's that's pretty aggressive. Here are the odds of three inches. The odds obviously considerably lower, but still, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that, uh, you know, there's probably a 20 to 40 percent chance that someone gets three inches out of this. But again, I think the Europeans probably a little too aggressive with this. So take these numbers with a grain of salt, but I did want to show you them anyway. Speaking of percentage chances, this is the National Weather Service uh, product, uh, percentage chance of seeing one inch worth of snow. Uh, Youngstown in the uh, brighter blues here, that's up at between 70 and 80 uh, percent. Lower than the European model, but still pretty high. Once you're north of I-80, though, the percent chance gets above 80 uh, percent. So the National Weather Service certainly believes there's a good chance that a lot of the valley, particularly from Youngstown north, is going to get an inch of snow out of this tomorrow. Here's the uh, chance of two inches. Around Youngstown proper, we're talking about uh, about a, a 50 to 60 percent chance, a little higher to the north, and then four inches. Odds of four inches around Youngstown, probably between five and 15 percent. Uh, Northern Trumbull County, the odds get up to maybe 30 to 40 percent. So, uh, bottom line is, uh, we're going to get some white on on the grass, I think, tomorrow, and on car tops and that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to go out with a forecast of, of a general coating to an inch or two. Two, I think, is the high end of things. If someone gets three or four, I'd be pretty surprised. If that were to happen, odds favor of being way up in Trumbull in Mercer counties. All right, so let's get beyond that ugly day tomorrow. Uh, high pressures overhead Wednesday. This is the map Wednesday, a bubble of high pressure right over us. So calm winds, sunshine for Wednesday. Thursday and Friday featuring a warming trend. We're going to get a southerly wind blowing in here. And after that sharp uh, cooling trend, uh, we're going to go back above average for Thursday and Friday. That's some good news. we got Easter weekend coming up. Good news, bad news situation here. Uh, Saturday looks kind of unsettled, maybe particularly in the morning. This is Saturday morning, low pressure over Michigan, showers here. Uh, if everything works out good, uh, those will primarily push away towards the afternoon. We might be able to salvage Saturday afternoon. Easter Sunday itself, right now, odds favor it looking okay. The GFS model here has some real light precipitation around. Not sure I believe that. I suppose there could be a sprinkle or a shower Sunday, but we're going to leave it out of the forecast for now and uh, focus on uh, highs in the, in the 50s, it looks like, for Easter weekend. Long-range temperature trend, uh, 16 days here. The black line in the middle is average, where we should be. And then the forecast is the, lines that, the line that moves around. Here's our big cold snap. We go above average again, end of the week. And then beyond that, overall, the pattern looks decent for the last... Oh, say 10 days of April, uh, a lot of days pretty close to average, it looks like. Maybe a few days where we get up to 70 or so, but I don't see a lot of cold in this pattern once we're done with the cold snap during the middle of this week. All right, that's weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday. Enjoy the warmth today. 
hopefully we can get through tomorrow and be sure and check out my latest weather report on the TV side on the uh, on the midday show today at noon. And I'll be back early tomorrow morning on WFMJ today at 5 a.m.